Jeremy Cook here, and some time ago I designed the Easy Fan Board, which made it easy to control a fan with the Raspberry Pi. I also made a script to help control this, but now Raspberry Pi has added this functionality into Raspberry Pi OS. And I found out that apparently you don't even need a transistor board like this to control a fan if it's got a PWM input. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up your Pi to control a PWM fan without any extra hardware, and I'm also gonna show off my Easy Fan 2 fan control board, which uses surface mount parts to make it really small and makes it easy to control simple fans that don't have a PWM input line. Lots going on in here, but basically it's gonna be all you need to know about controlling your fan with the Raspberry Pi. Shown here is the Easy Fan 2. It's really small. In fact, that's a US penny that it's sitting on. And notably, it's not gonna control really big fans, but just uh, small fans that take 0.6 amps or less. So let's, uh, let's take a look at how to actually turn this on based on the Raspberry Pi operating system. You just go to Preferences and then rec Raspberry Pi Configuration. From there, you can go to Performance and then you can turn on the fan. You can enable it. I already had it enabled, so disabled it, enabled it. And you can turn on the GPIO pin that you use to turn it on. This can turn on either a GPIO or either the PWM pin on the fan directly or my Easy Fan 2 board, which adds a small transistor to control little fans like that. You can also do it through the command line, just sudo or sudo raspi-config. Go to performance options, go to fan, and would you like it to control the fan? Yes, yes you do. And one thing here, you can't set the control, control temperature less than 60 degrees Celsius. So if you do need it lower, I do have a script that I made up for the old version and it will work for this too, that you could give it a try if you want, if you need it to come out say like 30 or something. At that point, you gotta reboot, gotta do this with the GOI as well. Then your video capture device goes to the test screen. Just like when you woke up before the TV actually came on as a little kid, or maybe that was just me. Getting to the hardware of how this works, you've got a red cable, a black cable, and then a orange cable in this particular fan. Plug the red end to five volts, plug the black end to ground, and then the orange PWM pin goes into 3.3 volts. That turns it on, that, that red, that orange pin just kind of regulates it. So I guess it's got a transistor on board the fan, although I, I haven't taken it apart to that level. Unplug it, plug it back into five volts, and. You know, this is actually a 12 volt fan, but it seems to run fine on, on five volts slash 3.3 volts control. Obviously you don't really care about uh, just turning on the fan if, you, if you're at this video. I've actually got another video about powering a fan with a nine volt battery. It's not the best video that I've ever done, but you can check it out if you want, leave me a comment. So if you do want to regulate it, you put the, you change the PWM pin to a, a certain pin. GPIO of 14 works nicely as seen before. And here I'm using a, a program to ramp up the temperature. It's, it's, I'll put a link to that in the description. So we'll let it do its thing. And once it ramps up to 60 degrees Celsius, it comes on. And so yada, yada, yada. And eventually it does its thing. So it turns on based on just the PWM control, no external transistor board or anything. Now the transistor board, the Easy Fan 2, will come in handy if you've got a very simple fan that doesn't have one of these PWM outputs. Now I'll, I'll note here that the, the Raspberry Pi isn't actually doing PWM control, it's just on off, but it's through the PWM input in the fan. I'm showing you here with a oscilloscope so you can see it's just you know off and then when it gets to a certain point it just, it just goes on. But that's all you really need to keep your Raspberry Pi cool. And once it goes back down to 50 degrees Celsius, it turns off again and it's ready to turn on when needed. So it works, works out nicely. On some other fans, you don't have a PWM input, so you will need a transistor in the middle. But you've got this yellow cord that, you know, what, what is that doing? Well, actually, this actually does a, an output so you can monitor the speed of the fan. Pretty cool, you could have a whole sort of closed loop system and I believe most fans have this. Most fans that have the PWM input have this sort of output, I believe. So you plug that into 3.3 volts. Doesn't really do anything. You can't. You can barely see this fan. In fact, I wouldn't. I wouldn't necessarily recommend using one this small. Nonetheless, when you plug the power in, it makes a really cool, cool signal to the oscilloscope. Kind of cool. Not much voltage is coming off, but hey, if you need to monitor it, that's a great way to give you some sort of feedback. Again, you could do some sort of closed loop PWM control with this, but that's a little out of the scope of this tutorial. 
Switching gears a bit, I thought I'd show off how I put together the Easy Fan 2. Little solder paste, put the components on, and then it's time to heat it up. Here's an earlier version of the board. I had to change a few things around, but it looks, the time lapse here looks awesome. It's a little harder to film when the headers aren't on. Looking good. And then you put the headers on. I used some special 90 degree headers that have the plastic parts that fit partially flush to the board itself. So it's very thin and very small. As shown earlier, it fits on, on a US penny, which is awesome. I even snapped off these headers on the bottom to make it easier to ship and to hopefully fit inside your case. It's obviously a simple device, but it's gone through several iterations to make it this small, and I'm, I'm quite proud of it. As far as hooking it up, it's pretty much the same thing as a PWM powered fan. You just plug in the wires from where the fan would go into the one end of it, and the other end, you plug the power and the ground into any fan, any little fan you want or any load for that matter. It doesn't have to be a fan. It could be a gear motor. It could be a light, I suppose, or solenoid. Anything you can want that's not too terribly intensive, but a little bit too much for the Pi to power directly. So there's the temperature. It's on and then it's gonna drop off. Again, I'd probably use it with a bigger fan, but if you have certain space constrictions, then perhaps this is the right way to go. You can also use it with a little, little motor like this or any sort of small load up to 0.6 amps. Basically anything that you can't power with the Pi, but not a huge motor either. So looking good there. Another thing, if you want to protect it further, you can use some heat shrink on it. This clear heat shrink makes a nice, nice little protection thing for it. And it makes it a little bit harder to pull out the, the wires. Actually pretty, I was impressed at how well it, how well it keeps the wires in place. Nice. So if you want an easy way to deal with fans, little motors, whatever else, Easy Fan 2 is a great way to do it. Hopefully this video gave you some instruction as far as powering a fan or other little motors with your Raspberry Pi. I've had a lot of fun with it. It's been a fun little design, fun challenge, and a good, good way to get a little bit more experience with surface mount components. Another thing I got some experience with was actually packaging this stuff. I wanted to be able to ship it inside a standard envelope, so I actually made this outline for it in cardboard. So it, you can put the Easy Fan 2 as well as some extra wires and some heat shrink. And this cardboard keeps it protected and somewhat rigid on its journey. Hope you enjoyed this. Hopefully this hasn't been too much of an infomercial for you, but it's been what I've been working on and it's been a lot of, been a really fun project. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. I make all kinds of stuff, so feel free to poke around on my channel. And thank you so much for watching. It's Jeremy Cook signing off.